2023 CFL Winter Meetings, one-on-one -on -one with Toronto Argonauts General Manager Michael Pinball Clemens. I'm most curious, has this shine and glow worn off yet from the Grey Cup now that we're into 2023? Uh, well, actually, it appears to be on you, right? That, so, so maybe there's a little reflection here, but you look great. I'll take yes, it. Yes, yes, it, yes. Uh, you, you know, as when, when you're um, when you're a player, I think it lasts a little bit longer, right? Uh, on this side, I, I think you you know you you celebrate, and and then you actually start thinking about you know next year, and, and then. Then there are multiple little celebrations. So you have multiple sort of little breaks in where you're celebrating, but but most of all, you start to think about what's going to happen uh, to the year in, in the year ahead. In terms of next year, I think everybody's curious about the quarterback situation. Yeah. I guess we'll start with McLeod Bell Thompson because he was your starter. Yes. He's a pending free agent. Has there been any conversations there with him? Um, when you say it, start with being curious. Yeah, I'm curious too. <laughs> and uh, uh, um, but but with Bethel, uh, tremendous relationship with him. Um, first of all, is his health right? And so he had a surgery on his thumb that was hurt in the Grey Cup, and and uh, so that's that's sort of the first step. Uh, always been patient with him. Uh, he um, has a very full life. Uh, there are a lot of things uh, going on, a lot of options. Uh, so he wasn't sure that he was going to come back this past season, right? Um, and uh, but but uh, he it's 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 in him. It itches him, right? And uh, so, you know, I, I I don't know what will will happen uh, for sure. But uh, I do know uh, that you know if if we if we had to, we, we would be comfortable with Chad moving forward. Um, but in, in saying that, right, we we want to um, give him all all the options. You know, Chad is already under contract, and 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 we'll see how that moves. Um, at this is this at this point, we're probably as curious as you are. We we probably know a little bit more on the inside, but we probably know enough to be more confused. Mm -hmm. Right, of whether or not he'll come back, right, because of the different things that, that are on his table. So it sounds like you could be patient with McLeod, maybe up until getting a little bit closer to free agency. Oh no, no question about that, right? We'll 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 be as patient as as um, it requires in in terms of that. In terms of Chad, you said you'd be comfortable with him taking over. Like he seems to have this energy, same but different compared to yours, and this following. Like every time we write about that guy on threedownnation.com. People are all over it. The traffic spikes, so yeah. we're kind of hoping that he's the starter. Yes. But what do you see from him in terms of that energy that he brings, the leadership, and then of course his ability on the field to potentially be a QB one? All right, when he, he is a guy who brings people together, right? They they people like being around him, right? He he dances, right? He does. He you know, he, <laughs> he 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 is. Um, you know, I, I don't want to overstate it, but he, he's the Joe Namath, right? He, he's, he's that guy who is just so full of life and uh, so much a part. Where, where you know, um, you, we look at one of the greatest all time to do it in Ricky Ray, right? Totally different way, just subdued, almost removed, always, you know, sort of giving credit. Uh, everywhere else, uh, but Chad loves the focus. He loves to be in the media, and and uh, and, and that's certainly not a bad thing for us in our marketplace. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask you: Could a guy like him help you put bums in seats, as Commissioner Randy Ambrosi likes to say, and grow the Argos brand as it's competing against the Blue Jays, the Leafs, the Raptors, and TFC in Toronto? Uh, we 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 need to understand that that it is going to be a building process when when you look at. Uh, the Raptors and when they came to town and where they are now, right? It's the same organization that that put the foundation down and built that. It does start, I believe, with just putting a competent team on the field so that when people do go and experience, right, they can have a good experience each time, right, so that you're not up and down. And so the first part of this was always to play more consistent football, and we've been able to uh, to do that. And he is uh, an important piece of, of that part of it. Um, and, you know, when, when, we, when we speak to, you know, spokespeople, um, uh, he, he certainly has that potential, um, but y you don't want to, you know, put too much too fast. He's going to be himself. You don't have to worry about that, right? He's going to do and be and and uh, so so could he be? Yes, but but is is that the no the 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 reason we have him here is because he's a good quarterback. 
and he's going to do those things on the football field that will keep us competitive, right? Uh, and, and further to that, um, there's a there's a good possibility uh, that um, he he may make us more attractive, and and that's that's a that's a really good thing. Yeah, I could believe it. One of the guys that made you more attractive last year was Andrew Harris. A lot of talk about bringing him in. You felt like he was the best running back in the CFL. And when he was healthy and on the field, I think he proved that statement to be right. Have you guys had contract negotiations with him? And how do you see his future? Um, I, I see his future in double blue. Um, but he sees his future uh, in in multiple options that he has uh, uh, in the off season here. And so uh, he's talked to me and he, he's uh, even, you know, given me the name of, you know, one of the guys he works works out with and different things like that. So so he's he's fed me a couple of ideas and that kind of thing. Uh, but he's been very resistant in terms of saying, you know, whether or not, I shouldn't say resistant, that's not the right word because you know, we, we do have great conversation, but, but he has been uh, coy, if you will, uh, about you know what's going to happen, and, and I, you try to give them enough space. Uh, we, you know we do talk, um, you know at least you know a couple times a month uh, generally, and, and so we kind of stay in touch. And when he when he when he's ready, he'll 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 let us know. And you guys parted ways with Brandon Banks. That's well known. But what I'm most curious about is in his contract. He had a thirty-five thousand dollars roster bonus for January first. Right. You guys released him, I believe it was January third. So was that something where you guys were doing something different, and he got that bonus? Well, um, you know the specifics of of guys and their contracts and that kind of thing. I, I make it a habit not to talk about that, right? So, um, but you know, we we uh, we love Brandon Banks. Uh, before he came, I, I often would go over and, and uh, just compliment him, you know, even as he was playing on our arch rival, for our arch rival and the team we hate the most, right? And, uh, <laughs> and, and we, we, we say that quite comfortably. And, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, but he is um, just such a good person. He's done so much in, in community. Right, he did so much, uh, uh, and and so yeah, we uh, we just we have a we have a lot of praise for him. He's he's uh, um, uh, uh, he was great great for our team, but more than that, great for our league. And and uh, and and you never know, right? Um, you know, he he uh, he might he might stay ready, right? Uh, he can still run, <laughs> and so so uh, we don't know what the future holds there, right? But uh, you know, there's uh, uh, we we're really we're really happy he got a chance to hoist the cup. He's one of those guys who really deserved uh, the opportunity to hold that cup above their head. And two other guys, real quick, before I get to your head coach, Curly Gittins Jr. and Jagera Davis are pending free agents. How do you see both of those guys potentially fitting in with the Argos individually? Right. Um, so uh, yeah, again, right. I, we it, it's not fruitful to kind of go through those conversations but but curly is obviously a, a young guy who is um you know when when you when you look at his whole story and where he came from i don't know if you've had a chance to talk to him uh uh fulsome about you know his his more of his life story um it it is beyond inspiration, right? Um, uh, and um, so we're we're really excited, uh, you know, about about that opportunity. He does have a chance in the NFL window. He has had uh, workouts, and uh, uh, so. Um, but but he, you know he is a fundamental piece living in the city and 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 so much a part of who we are. Uh, J. Garrett uh, as well was you know the guy who who had been there right. We were trying to get there and he's been there and uh, uh, and with J. Garrett right. Uh, he he he's his own man right. There's no question about that. He's his own man, his own guy, and uh, you know I have a really good, really strong, really solid relationship uh, with him. Uh, but but I do know that he's his own man, and he'll make up his own mind in his own time. <laughs> Ryan Diddy would, would Ryan Dinwood, excuse me, was in that same chair, and he said that he's negotiating contract extension. His contract's up at the end of, I believe it's this season, 2023. And he's turned down an FL job in the past, and he's kind of got that cachet now of being a great cup winning head coach. 
how much does Michael Pinball Clemens, the GM, want to lock him in and keep him in Toronto? Mm -hmm. But would you understand if NFL teams can't call it? Uh, I, I, but the answer to all of those are yes, right? And um, <clears throat> when you, when you know, you don't want to um, keep people back either, right? Um, especially when you care about them. Right. Uh, and so um, right now we're really focused on making Toronto Argonauts, the Toronto Argonauts, not just a good team, but a great team. Right. Um, we, <clears throat> you know, we won the Grey Cup and that, that sort of suggests that there is, you know, oh, you, 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 you won the Grey Cup. The reality, though, is is that we weren't the best team in the league last year. The best team in the league was the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. We had maybe the best day, right? Um, we had that moment, right? But but we haven't reached that elite level uh, yet where uh, we go from, uh, you know, we often talk about Ryan, um, you know, quoted it to the guys that, that uh, um, <clears throat> um, good is the enemy of great. And the reason we have so few great companies in North America is because we have so many good ones. And good is the enemy of great. Right. But when you win a great cup, you can say, OK, now you got to be classified amongst the great. Right. Now it's time to seek greatness. Right. And, and that's those teams that can be great, great over a course of years or over a course of time. And that's really what our focus is. And, and as a part of that, we will be, um, you know, uh, certainly um, looking to extend him right away this year. Um, but if there are opportunities that come up, we're, we're not necessarily opposed to those things either. How much does Michael Pembroke Clemens <coughs> enjoy being the general manager? And I say that because you're very well known. We know about some of your charity work that has been vast for a number of years in the city and outside that as well. You have many other opportunities, things that you could do. So how long do you envision being the GM of this team? And is this something that you've really come to love now in this role? Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it today and I and, uh, won't, won't say much past that. You know, my love is for the Canadian Football League first and the Toronto Argonauts second, uh, the Hamilton Tigers. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I Should we get a new team? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said the league. Oh, right, right. right. right? <laughs> and, and then the Argos is two, and they would be 10. Yes, yes. So, uh, <clears throat> but. But in saying that, it's a great rivalry, and we have so much. I have so much respect uh, for so many of those guys. This, you know, starting with Orlando Steinauer, their head coach, and 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 then uh, their owner is uh, such a charismatic guy, and has has you know just made a tremendous commitment. And so, um, you know, we, we we have to say we hate each other because that's part of our history. But there there's really a pretty good relationship, and we really do love those guys. And, I, and I, you have to take this off the podcast. We we really do. Love of those guys down the street <laughs> in reality uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, in, in saying that you know our, um, our, our my, my focus is on trying to make um, our game and our league sustainable overall we're really happy that we could catch up with you sit down always a great time and hopefully that pinball that we're used to hearing from your voice <laughs> yes, yes. gets a little better. All right. Thank you so very much for that. Really appreciate it. And, uh, and thank you for what you do. Keep it up. Appreciate you. All right. All right.